Morning, or evening, grace, brother, and sisters. Glad to have everybody back on with us here with a Temperance Awakening as we continue our vaping lectures and doing number 15 here today, which is day 8 of our quit. And also here with day 8, now getting into our second week, we're going to look at manager cravings. Now, since um, uh, day 7 was a scheduled date to stop your vaping, uh, this week, days 8 to 14, going to look at managing your cravings. And uh, cravings are the biggest obstacle to kicking any kind of addiction. You know, one minute you're doing fine, feeling healthy, happy, and proud because you quit, then out of nowhere you feel like you can't go another second without a puff. And people always say, one day at a time, but um, a lot of the time, though, it's more like one second at a time. And as a person, you know, that had an addiction to sugar, like I mentioned before, you know, I completely agree with that. You're fine in the morning, and then at noon time, but then in the evening, you know, then like one minute you're fine, 15 minutes later you got that craving. And you know, when cravings arise, it's like a powerful wave. You need to ride them out instead of letting them overwhelm you. And you know, this step two, this second week, is all about learning how to do that. First though, you need to congratulate yourself on making it this far. You know, seriously, you know, congratulate yourself if you want to cheer for yourself. And we kind of mentioned that a little bit before. You know, that can actually be a good psychological help. You know, say it out loud. You know, I quit vaping. You know, I'm proud of myself. I've done good. And if you have quit, you know, you've earned it. You're putting in the time and the effort to change and heal. And so, like I said, in this step here, all of step two, days eight to fourteen, We'll look at continuing to use hand-to-mouth and nicotine replacement therapy. We're going to double-check that all vape, all vape devices and material are like in a trash dump somewhere. You know, not anywhere around our house or automobile or anything. And also conquer your emotional triggers, vary your routine to avoid vaping, sweat out the nicotine, monitor your internal dialogue, recognize your progress, and pursue your passions and things that are right in life. And now looking at day eight here, looking at a clean house, so kind of just reinforcing here that all of our vaping things are gone and trying to limit that temptation as much as we can. Addressing a deep emotional house cleaning is, you know, ahead right now. And we're going to double check and make sure you've had your home, your car, and you know, like any backpacks, briefcases, or anything, you know, reflective of an ex-vapor. And you can't vape if the opportunity doesn't exist. You know, reducing your exposure to vaping products, you know, helps you defend yourself from temptation, and it makes it harder to lapse. You know, like I said, as a person that was, you know, addicted to sugar. You know, like you might have heard that before with people, you know, that try to start eating healthy, you know, get rid of all the junk food. You know, like, it's much harder, you know, to eat, you know, like a Debbie cake, a pie, or, you know, drink soda if it's not in your house. You know, rid your house of all that stuff. And, you know, we're going to double check and make sure that all physical traces and reminders of vaping are, you know, free from your environment. And anywhere that you vaped, you know, or a thing of the past. The psychological term for these reminders is cues, so we're also going to look at some psychological things. You know, these cues, which trigger or prompt your desire to puff. Cues can be internal or external, you know, and they're extremely powerful. You know, internal cues are generally emotional, for example, like anger, anxiety, boredom, depression, fear, sadness, or stress. That desire to vape stems not from your body's physical dependence on nicotine, but from your mind. It's also a psychological thing. And we'll talk about managing some of these internal cues later on in the program in days ahead. Then external cues, of course, you know, they come from the environment. You know, these tangible triggers also stimulate your urge to vape. Examples of some of these external cues could be Places, you know, that you vape before, such as a car, like people, you know, just get in the car and drive. You know, a place in the home, maybe a particular room, which we're going to kind of address a little bit. You know, an office, like a place where you work or school, after school, after school hangouts. You know, like where you've had a history of vaping. Or maybe like vape ads, like on the radio or online. I don't think there are really any of them on television anymore. As the time of this recording, I don't think that's legal, which is good. 
Then I've seen vaping products, you know, like going by vape shops or tobacco shops, watching people vape. That's a big one there, I know. Uh, like, uh, that's, that can also kind of be like when you're trying to fast and not eat anything and you see other people eat. Like I said, if, you know, you're trying to fast from, you know, sugary foods or sugary beverages and you see other people drinking or eating those. And then, you know, being around, like people that vape. I've certainly heard that with people that use tobacco products, like people that, you know, either, you know, like dip, chew tobacco, or people that smoke cigarettes, you know, or cigars or whatever. You know, you get around people that do that, and we mentioned that before, you know, maybe trying to get an escape plan, being around people that vape. But I know that can be really, really difficult, like somebody offering you a puff of something, like you have relatives, you know, close relatives, maybe neighbors, like people that live near you, people you see on a regular basis, like if, you know, you're a family and you and your cousins, aunts and uncles, you know, you get together at somebody's house every week and you're around people that do that. I know that can be very challenging, so, you know, we want to try to steer clear of those people when they're vaping as much as possible, you know, like we mentioned. And if you've tried to quit before, you know how strong these cues can feel. You know, you'll face temptation when friends or family vape around you, like we mentioned. You know, seeing other people doing it. You know, and in places where you used to do it, you might also miss the actions. You know, themselves, you know, such as holding the device in your hand, you know, putting it between your lips. You know, pulling a drag from it. And like we mentioned, you know, when that happens, you know, try, you know, try practicing, you know, the H2M, the hand-to-mouth that we went over. And then also, you know, eliminate the external cues that are triggering you. You know, this step of cleaning house, you know, really has nothing all to do with willpower. Like, people talk about willpower, like, you know, with any addiction, like I mentioned, you know, trying to quit eating sweets or, you know, quitting vaping, tobacco, alcohol, drugs, or whatever. And white-knuckle determination is only going to get you so far, though. You, you know, you don't have a very limited amount of it. And using willpower alone to resist cravings is like trying to hold a beach ball underwater, a good analogy. You can do it for a little while, but then, you know, it's going to take an enormous amount of strength, and eventually that ball is going to pop back up. And if you do lapse, you might experience feelings of shame, self-condemnation, or guilt. You know, why can I have more self-control? I'm never going to be able to do this. I might as well just give up now. And none of those thoughts are productive, and nothing is wrong with you. You know, you're not a failure. You know, you don't need willpower to master your cravings. You also need to re-engineer your environment for success. You know, like some things right or whatever, like other activities, you know, apart from vaping that are good and wholesome. They might not seem external, but also remember to eliminate, you know, things that we mentioned, like online cues, you know, like if, uh, like especially like things that are targeted toward youth, you know, toward teenagers, <clears throat> you know, like, uh, like this one 17-year-old uh, boy said, I was constantly on my computer or iPhone Googling stuff about how safe vaping is. You know, I wanted affirmation, but deep down I was kidding myself. You know, part of my quit on this day was to resist the urge to, you know, Google pro-vaping information. You know, then I also unsubscribed from all, my, from all my vaping sites, and it was a great move for me. And like, you know, that's a big one there, you know, like with technology. And so, you know, eliminate, you know, all of those, you know, online, you know, things. Like if you're on social media, you know, don't follow those, you know, vaping companies and so forth. You know, just kind of like we've already mentioned, you know, like with somebody trying to quit, you know, eating sugary foods and drinks. You know, eliminate that from your environment. You know, same like with alcohol, like, you know, you have to eliminate alcohol from your environment. You, you got to get that out of your house. You know, you can't. You know, you need to drive another way, like for an alcoholic who's used to going by a bar, you know, drive another way, you know, don't go by that bar. And see, same with vaping, you know, if you need to quit vaping, want to quit vaping, you have to rid your environment of all the reminders of that activity. You know, it's much easier to vape in public, you know, than it is to smoke, you know, for people of this generation, because for about the last, you know, like uh, 30 years or so, you know, they've been hard pressed. you know, people don't need to smoke in public, you know, we need to rid public places of tobacco smoke. But it's a bit easier to vape in public for people of this generation, so controlling some of these external cues, you know, can be a little bit more challenging maybe for vapors. 
But nonetheless, you know, limiting them will certainly decrease your opportunities to vape and set you on the right track. And so now looking at our day eight assignments here, so continue with hand to mouth as much as necessary. You know, and also, of course, that's not just the motions, you know, but also the affirmations, you know, like we mentioned there. You know, you have those temptations, say, I'm an ex-vapor, you know, I've quit vaping. You know, of course, you know, we're faith-based, you know, you're a spiritual person, uh, you know, have a Bible around, you know, quotes, you know, good devotional books and things to help you, and also nicotine replacement therapy, if you're doing that. And then, uh, like I said, if, like, you know, whatever automobile you might have, you know, have it detailed, you know, take it to a car wash and get it clean of that vaping smell. You know, wash any clothes or linens that, you know, you wear, or, you know, like, like, you know, bed linen, you know, that you might have vaped on, you know, give it a good clean as well. You know, do a deep clean on the places you like to vape in your home, which, you know, we're going to look at with, uh, we're going to look at here with our assignment. And also continue doing the visualization exercises as well. And so now looking at the clean house checklist, we got a couple of things here. It's on page 170 for people that have the textbook. For those of you that don't, you know, get ready to write this down or, you know, type it if, you know, you're on a computer or a tablet or whatever. You know, if you're typing these in, writing them down or whatever. We're going to look at a couple of things here. And here are um, both of these things, or both of these checklists. They'll help you ditch any physical reminder of your past vaping life. The first one that we're going to look at, it lists all the places, you know, that you might keep, you know, that you might uh, be keeping vaping materials. So go through these places carefully and toss everything and anything that has to do with vaping. And so we've got some items here. Some of these are going to kind of be rooms in the home and some other personal items, you know, where you might have vaping materials. And so like I said, you know, write these down if you don't have the textbook. Feel free, you know, to pause, you know, pause this lecture, you know, then restart it after you write them down. But I'm going to mention each one, going to mention it relatively slow to get people to write. And the first one we have is the attic, like if your home has an attic, could be a place where you are vaping, the attic. A backpack. Any kind of bags, you know, like a briefcase or whatever. Like the balcony, if you know your home has a balcony. The basement. The bathroom. <coughs> any bedrooms. Bookshelves. Cars. Cars or, you know, automobiles. Closets. Coats. Coffee table deck, like a deck at home, or maybe like even a deck, you know, where you work or something. The den, like den or living room. Actually, we're going to mention living room again. Some people call it a den, some people call it a living room. Some people have a den and a living room. Or a desk, like a desk at home, you know, work or school. The desk. Dressers, like any dressers that you have. The foyer, you know, like a foyer in a home. A garage. The garden. The guest room, jackets, kitchen, any kind of cabinets at home or at work even, living room, a messenger bag, a nightstand, anything in an office, like where you work at or school or whatever, college, pantry, a purse, a shed, the study, or your yard. And now here's a checklist of all the items that you just need to throw away and get rid of. And these are all things that have to do with vaping. Adapters, atomizers, batteries and chargers, build kits, Coils and cartridges, drip tips, e-cigarettes, e-liquids, labware and mixing supplies, 
mods, pods, replacement glass, starter kits, storage bottles, tanks, vape pens, vapor t-shirts or other articles of clothing, or maybe like bags or anything of that nature. And like we mentioned, vaping apps or like links on a phone, a tablet, a computer, vaping ads or articles, brochures, any kind of like books or printed material of vaping. You know, that is things that are not anti-vaping. <laughs> things that are pro-vaping get rid of. Things like anti-vaping certainly keep to help you. Any wire, wick, or cotton, and any other reminders that uh, you used to vape. And so now we'll go back and we will do our um, day 18 talk to our parents here. And now looking at hiding places. And uh, most teenagers, you know, just being honest, not all, but most of them, you know, they don't even like to clean their own room or, or you know, their own room or anything. And so they certainly don't want it to divulge their hiding places for, you know, contraband like vaping things and so you've got a challenge you know just being honest you know like if you're a parent and you put your teen in this program especially if it's like against their will you've got a challenge you know if they won't even pick up you know their own dirty clothes then how are you gonna make sure that they you know clean house of this vaping stuff first asking them to ditch the vaping stuff from their bedroom certainly isn't too much to ask you know they live in your home you know you know they're eating your food and all so they have to follow the house rules if you don't allow vaping in your home, then, you know, they can't keep any of the supplies or accessories of vapings there, and, you know, that's a very fair and reasonable expectation. But they also don't have to reveal their hiding places to you either, so asking them to remove all of their vaping items from their rooms using the checklist that we just mentioned, like on page 170, and putting all of it in a bin or a box that you provide. You know, and let them know, too, that you're going to be making periodic walkthroughs to make sure that they're following the rules. So like we said, you know, it's really your home, so you know, you go, you know, you look around, all the things that we mentioned, anything that you have in your home. Like teenagers, you know, they often have a lot of hiding spots and stashes, you know, that might not be in their rooms. Like an obvious spot is a locker at school. And here is also where it can help to communicate, you know, with school officials to encourage locker checks, you know, let's be honest. Tell them, you know, my child's been vaping, and I know there's a lot of kids now that vape, and so, you know, maybe you can do locker checks and, like, other things, you know, in school, you know, look around to make sure, you know, that they're not vaping, because there are quite a few schools that are tackling, you know, this teen vaping crisis. You know, some schools have installed technology that detects where and when kids are vaping at school. And even when the detectors sense a certain chemical and alert goes straight to school officials, so make sure that your teenager knows that's a possibility. So talk to them, teach them, and test them. You know, that's what um, you have to do, and that's some good leverage, you know, that can verify that they are abstaining from vaping. And so tomorrow on day nine, we'll be looking at some more of these emotional cues that we mentioned. I'm going to be doing that in a little bit of, uh, in a little bit of detail. And so we look forward to doing that as well. So come on back and be with us. And thanks so much for listening to the lectures and all the effort that you're putting into it. You know, after all, it is for you. And so, uh, once again, thanks for being with us here. We'll see you tomorrow for day nine. Until then, and until the direction of the shadows flee away, I'm Dr. Cooper, and I love you, and I appreciate you.